final in that one. We're counting you down to tip off between Clemson and NC State and coach. It is tough to see Diamond Johnson on the bench. Certainly wishing her well. She was injured two games ago. She is now missing her second straight game with an injury. Not just her. Also Jada Boyd, another key piece of this offense and this team uh, out the last three games with an injury. So this team has had to play without them and figure it out a little bit. And there they're seeing a Clemson team that is on a five game win streak right now. How different is what NC State does without those two players. Well, I think it's a great opportunity for the bench. You've got different players stepping up. We've got point guard by committee. Sayana Rivers is really playing well. She has really stepped up. Love to see that. Uh, I think it's it's just giving them a chance to try new people, new combinations, and they're getting a good rest, and they have all of Christmas break now. They recover from that. Injury. We got to talk to Sanaya Rivers the other day, and it was great to hear her feeling like she's kind of coming into her own and being more of the player that she knows that she can be. We'll see how she's able to step up tonight. On the other side of things, this Clemson team, I mentioned has won five straight games, but when they've played top 25 teams this year, they've played two. They haven't been able to get the win. Another opportunity for them today. What do you want to see from them? Yeah, it's a really good opportunity for them. Ruby White Whitehorn. She is mm -hmm. somebody that's coming along as a freshman. She got a lot of pub coming in. Uh, she's somebody that can really light up the scoreboard. This is a team that's got to play well together. They got to play great defense, but it, they really have a challenge here in trying to guard NC State. Amari Robinson, one of the key pieces back for this Clemson team. Coach NC State, they've won 13 out of the last 14 in this matchup. This is a game that you, I'm sure, don't want to overlook as you get ready for Clemson, for Christmas break. It's really difficult. You know, you just came out of finals. You're ready to head home for Christmas, and you, you don't know where your team is right now. They're thinking, eh, we're going to win this game. Let's just get it over with, or they're going to come out and play hard. And especially with a couple of their key players missing, we'll see what they are able to do. They've been able to take care of business in the past without Jada and without Diamond. And as you mentioned, an opportunity for some of their other players to step back up. So we will send you out to the game at Reynolds Coliseum. Coach and I will send you, see you rather, back at the half. It's Angel Gray and Helen Williams on the call, guys. Take it away. For the third year in a row, NC State ACC champions. We're just moments away from tipping things off here in the sold-out Reynolds Coliseum between the 8th ranked NC State Wolfpack and the 8-3 Clemson Tigers for their ACC opener. According to both coaches, it's a brand new season as they look to get off on the right foot to open up league play. And we welcome you forward side. Hello, everyone. I'm Angel Gray alongside Coach Helen Williams. And Coach, the trek to protect the ACC crown continues for the Wolfpack as they continue in their ACC play, but they'll have to dig deep into their toolbox. Only eight players available for them tonight, and they're going without two of their top players, and Jada Boyd as well as Diamond Johnson. Yeah, and one of those top players is the point guard. Uh, that's going to be really, really important for them. Are they going to have one person to replace Diamond Johnson, or are they going to play point guard by committee tonight? Spoken like a true coach as a committee, you want to see who's going to step up. Well, the good thing for Coach Moore is that he's had that in the last few games about as balanced as a carpenter's level. Eight different players have led the team in scoring this season and have been able to really step up off the bench. He said, we're just two rolled ankles away from someone getting their opportunity, and they showed us in that last game against Davidson. Yeah, well, the good thing for the Wolfpack is that they've got seven players who are averaging over 20 minutes a game, and so it's not like they don't have real-time game experience. Real-time game experience. How about Sanaya Rivers as well? You mentioned before just how she's been able to step up. Yeah, I mean, she is a player that has grown in confidence over this last year. Very high IQ basketball player. What a joy to watch. Well, on the other side, they'll have their hands full as well. Amari Robinson who continues to progress in each season coming off of a double-double. Yeah, just not that fancy, just steady, just consistent. And that's what Clemson needs from her tonight. Clemson coming in just two games away from tying their or matching their total wins from last season. As you see on the other side, stepping in, Amanda Butler, who, as you can see, has a history of winning the 2018-2019 ACC Coach of the Year. And we were at their shoot-around. She talked about how she loves the energy within that shoot-around, but the focus and understanding how important this game is to open up league play is so important. Yeah, energy is great, but it's nothing without that focus and without that execution. And that's what Clemson's going to have to have today. Our officials for today, we have Karen Priato, Billy Smith, Ashley Gloss on the call for today. 
Clemson starting out, getting a turnover from their 2-3 zone. And you see Ruby Whitehorn, the first McDonald's All-American recruited by Clemson, coming to play today. You can see the full court press for Clemson as well, slowing down NC State, averaging about 80 points per game, third best in the ACC. You can see the starting five for the Wolfpack. And we talked earlier today in the shoot around without a point guard, uh, NC State, how are they going to be in that half court offense? With five on the shot clock, how about Zanaya Rivers on Q stepping up for the tray? Oh, well, there's a good answer there. Good execution, good patience, nice smooth shot there. For Clipson starting five. You can see different players have been able to step up. Ruby Whitehorn has been a pleasure to watch as she can't connect on that three for the response. But Whitehorn, as you mentioned, the only McDonald's All-American in Brooklyn history to come in, and she's been a huge force. How about that? <laughs> Mimi Collins. It's not going to be denied on that shot. And, and you'll see NC State, they'll try to transition and get into the fast break offense where they don't have to, you know, do so much with that half court. Without a point guard, it's really, there's some nuances when you have a true point guard, you know, in terms of timing, in terms of placement of players and where they're supposed to be. So their defense and their rebound is going to be key to their transition offense. See Westmore, head coach, 10th season. But none better when you're looking at how he's been able to win within the, in the ACC. Three straight regular season ACC titles. Was able to match that as well with the conference ACC title as well in the tournament. See if they can repeat here. Pick third in the ACC is Bradford. He dials up from distance and hits back iron. And how Clemson deals with the length on the perimeter from the guards defensively for NC State as you see. Collins here, make a three-pointer. She was on in pregame before warm-ups with that three-pointer. Definitely carrying it over. Back-to-back -back buckets for Collins. She's sitting at five. That's five of NC State's first eight. Hobby with the rebound. And you Sanaya Rivers, who's been able to step in for Diamond Johnson as she rolled her ankle. Missing her third game. Quick turnaround. I think that was more of a heat check. Can't get that one to fall. Well, Collins is a player that can hurt you from inside or out. As you see, Nunu Bradford there. She's going to take a lot of shots. She's a high volume shooter. She's on. It's good for Clemson. She's already hit 15 on the season, shooting about 37% from distance. Gets in the passing lane there, disrupting the pass. This pretty perfect man is able to get an easy deuce on the left side. Two turnovers out of five possessions here in the half-court offense. Make it three for NC State. And that was close to just really silencing the crowd on that one. As Deja Bradford has been one of those constant players and consistent on the defensive end, putting both sides together so far for Clemson. Open shooter, Madison Hayes. Triple. Well, Hayes has been a player that hasn't scored a lot, but really hustles and gives them opportunities with rebounds and steals. So good to see her uh, on the board offensively for NC State. Averaging about eight points as quickly. How about Amari Robinson? We talked about what she needed to do to be a little bit different in the offseason. She said, I'm adding that three ball to my game. As you can see, that's the next one that's been dropped down for Clemson. Well, and that's good for them because Camille Hobby's not going to come all the way out there. If she can continue to hit that, it would be good for them. Fast-paced game as another bucket goes down. Jaquita Brown-Turner now on the board. And that's big for Coach Westmore. Everything's about rebounding, getting out extra opportunities. We didn't like her look at the wing, so backs it out. Still have a lot of time on the clock. Robinson turns down the three. Rivers sends it up to Madison Hayes. Oh, board for the pack. So two old boards in this possession. Nikita Brown Turner with a lot of time. Short on the shot. Deja Bradford 
in a burst, getting all the way to the rim. Had a little bit of contact there, but is able to get the two. She now has five points. And you miss those threes, you create opportunities, fast break opportunities for the defense. You see there in transition for Clemson. Halfway through the first quarter, one point game, and she stayed up one. Double team on Hobby. Love the defensive energy for Clemson. Again, trying to disrupt that half-court offense. Officials, timeout on the court. Well, Clemson creating opportunities for themselves. As you see Bradford here on the fast break. Try to block me if you want tonight, Rivers. Well, Coach Amanda Butler told us it's about the scripted risk on defense. Right now, they've been able to score off of those three turnovers from NC State. Yeah, we, she talked about the energy on both ends of the floor and getting high possessions here. And so far, they've forced uh, four turnovers for, for um, NC State. They've got seven points off those turnovers. And that's, again, remember I talked earlier about continuity in that half-court offense when you don't have that point guard that's sort of making sure that everybody's where they're supposed to go and the timing on that. People are unsure of where they need to be. And Clemson's energy has given them an opportunity. All about energy for Coach Butler as they right now are forcing them into a late shot clock. One on the shot clock as she has to heave it up and come down with the rebound. Whitehorn stops on a dime, back iron. So NC State is able to get a stop in that possession and coming out of that timeout. Are there any different things you want to see from the Wolfpack? I'd like to just see more patience, and if, you know, if you're not hitting shots, we need, they need to crash the boards harder. Right? Give themselves more opportunity if the shots aren't falling. That attempted trap on the sideline. Maddie Ott picks up her first personal foul. It's a level of pressure from the Tigers. Just being in their spaces, Mimi Collins still has a hot hand from how she started the first quarter. Yeah, good job finding the gap in that 2-3. They start off on out of bounds and player to player defense, but switch back to that 2 for so the patience to find the gap. Averaging seven points per game, and she's already hit that mark. And a quick response for Clemson, Alasia Douglas. She's key for them off the bench. Missed the last couple of games, but she's a really good three-point shooter, really good penetrator, and gives them an opportunity here. And obviously, a good defensive player taking the charge there. Now, they haven't had her for the last couple of games, and they've really struggled with production off the bench. Junior college transfer from Western Nebraska. You can see here the forearm going up, Coach. Yeah, I, I know as officials, I hate to make that call because no one agrees with you know, Half people agree with them, and half of them don't. But she did have that forearm out there. So Alasia Douglas getting things done on both ends of the floor. Top of your screen, you talked about her being a very good three-point shooter. That's just her sixth three on the season, but doesn't hesitate if she's left open. And so you've got three subs on the floor here with Kiana Gaines, Douglas, and Ott. Trying to find some offense for Clemson. And again, just steady, Amari Robinson. So Amari Robinson now has six points. Would you ever guess that all of those points would be coming from distance? She has that ability, has not shot a whole lot today. And then, well, Hayes says, if you can do it, I can do it too. It's been raining threes. And Madison Hayes responds with three of her own. The Tigers quite a bit there as NC State. There's Timmons. Nice look on the inside, almost broken up by Elmore. Up and down, they will call it a jump ball. Possession arrow going to the Tigers. You see Amari Robinson here. Well, if you're not gonna guard me, it's going straight up. That's a three. And NC State, Hayes comes back. I can do that too. We've already seen eight threes in this ball game. We're tied at 18 with 2.23 left in the first quarter. 
We talked about how important the pace was going to be for both teams. Who was going to establish their style of play? Can you say or differentiate who has been able to do that so far? Well, I think Clemson has been the aggressor on defense, and they've been able to get more of what they're usually getting. As you see, defense here by Brown Turner. Clemson has got more offense from their defense, and that's honestly good for NC State there to get transition buckets. Kia Brown Turner gets the pick six. Had a nice little Euro step to finish it off, but I tell you what, Deja Bradford, I don't think you can ask for a better start from her. Well, she's a streaky shooter. She's hitting. That's great for Clemson. You mentioned it, eight points already, averaging close to 10 points per game. But last game, she had 22 points. Looks for her time to score. River Baldwin. Trapped on the baseline, only seven seconds to go. It's almost like Clemson is playing with eight players. Douglas with the left. Can't get it to fall in. Hannah Hank thought she was in the right position, but falls out of bounds, so we'll go back to the Wolfpack. Well, Clemson doing a great job in their 2-3 defense of trapping and you know, taking time off the clock. NC State's trying to have to make something happen with under 10 seconds on the clock, and they're struggling with that. So Clemson with the one-point lead. With 71 seconds left to go in the first quarter, that says it all for Westmore with his hands up like, what's going on at this point? So we're just trying to take care of the ball. Already six turnovers for the Wolfpack. And how about another one? Now, they were NC State struggles. Obviously, you don't have your point guard in there. The one loss that they've had is because they had too many turnovers. When they lost to UConn, they had 19 turnovers. First 15 points for UConn were scored off of NC State turnover, so they've got to take good care of the basketball. That's who and how they're running in the passing lanes. My goodness, Bradford, have yourself a night. Nunu Bradford, she likes to go by now with 10 points. The only player in double figures in the first frame. Less than a minute to play. Another steal by Bradford. She might have a triple-double to close out the first quarter. And the end one. Again, Clinton just being aggressive. They talked about getting in the passing lane. They talked about tips today and deflections and getting their offense high possession from their defense. NC State really struggling playing against that 2-3 zone. That's the second possession in a row where they got below 10 seconds on the shot clock and nothing good has happened for them. All right, well, on Thursday, December 29th, we'll have a women's basketball doubleheader right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. At 6 Eastern, the number five Notre Dame travels to Coral Gables to take on Miami. Then Duke takes the short drive to Reynolds Coliseum. Face the eight NC State. How about Notre Dame slipping past Virginia Tech? in that top 10 showdown earlier today. It's gonna be a good year. <laughs> <laughs> gonna be competitive. How lucky are we that we get to call this league? So much depth. You have four different teams that are in the top 10. And it's a slugfest every single night. with nine points has been the answer for NC State, but they need a little bit more of it. Five to work with, Robinson all the way to the bucket and gets it. So Robinson now with eight points. Her and Bradford have had themselves a first quarter. Clemson on a 10 to two run to end the first. And the basketball world lost a true icon and legend December 14th at the age of 79. After the break, we'll discuss her impact on this game. And how we're feeling it today, the great Billy Moore.
recognize an icon, just not in women's basketball, but basketball as a whole. Really more her impact. You just go down her resume, you realize how much she has done for this game. The first coach in women's basketball to lead two different schools to national titles at Cal State Fullerton, as well as the 1978 team at UCLA. And how about also 296 wins at UCLA, most in program history. Coached the first U.S. Olympic women's basketball team to silver medal in 1976. It was really cool watching the game earlier on ABC and just how they were talking about Pat Summit being on that roster as well. Two icons on that roster, just seeing how many different women have been able to impact the game and how we continue to fill it and reap the fruit from it at this point. Yeah, what you see today obviously sold out and. You know, that was the genesis, the beginning of the uh, coverage for women's basketball that a lot of players now take for granted. And really more, one of the greatest coaches she had was just saying how the women's game is going to grow so much as River Baldwin is able to beat the buzzer on that one. One of the greatest things in how this game is going to continue to grow is that you're not going to be able to walk up to the box office at a women's basketball game and get a ticket. What a moment right now as NC State has their seventh sellout game with 5,500 people in the building to cheer on their Wolfpack. Yeah, it's a great atmosphere here today. And I know Coach Westmore and his program, they're very appreciative of the fans for NC State that continue to come out and support them. Zaya James picks up her first personal foul. Four point lead for Clemson. He shot close to 60% in the first quarter. Deja Bradford erupted. Robinson left alone once again from deep short on the shot. But they're able to track down another old board. Yeah, and that's, that's, that's a problem for NC State is the people that they have on Robinson, which is, you know, Hobby and Baldwin, they're not going to come out there, so they need to make an adjustment, maybe put Hayes or Collins on, they, on her because they can get out there and play her on the perimeter. Right now, she's a mismatch for the inside for NC State. Coming into this ball game, she only hit four trays. Knowing that's been her focus, she's already hit two tonight. Got to make the adjustment. Beautiful pass on the inside by Rivers to River Baldwin. River to River. <laughs> well, just a uh, miscommunication there with uh, Amari Robinson going out, playing the forward, and a nice little ball fake there. Again, just high IQ from Rivers. Hawking up the paint, the Wolfpack. Well shot by Hannah Hank. Baldwin. Too strong. Yeah, NC State only getting one opportunity. Whitehorn with a beautiful scoop pass on the inside. I'm not sure if Mari Robinson was ready for it, but she had the numbers in transition. Talked about the advantage for Clemson in transition. Two points for fast break. 10 to two advantage against the Wolfpack. Three all the way to the rim. Amari Robinson is able to clean it up, but can't quite get the look that she wanted underneath. She was looking for a foul. Yeah, Clemson's been able to run from missed shots and from the turnovers, obviously, in that first quarter. NC State's got a, when they've been successful against this zone, it's been right there at that free throw line area. Find a way to continue to exploit that, because anytime they go short corner, they get trapped and they don't get anything off with under 10 seconds on the shot clock. Brown Turner can't connect. Clemson still looking for their first bucket of the quarter. There's a lot of contact there, but Clemson still has the ball. Well, we have a college basketball doubleheader for you Wednesday night right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Number 24, Virginia Tech is in just up Hill to take on Boston College in their first game at 6.30 Eastern. Then Florida State hosts Notre Dame in Tallahassee. These are the final games for these two before the holiday break. Four seconds on the shot clock. Matty Ock joins it. You know you got the vibe when you're hitting those kinds of shots. 
She's a three-point shooter, already has 14 on the season. She doesn't play a lot, but they do look for her on the perimeter when she's in there. That's why they put her in the game. Kia Brown Turner tries to respond, can't get one, and Whitehorn snatches that one right out of the air. Going back to Maddie Ott. Maddie Ott last year got her first career start versus NC State. She had 14 points, and guess what? Hit four threes as well in that one. James, who is red hot against Davidson, gets the old board, and Mimi Collins with 11. Collins only averaged like two points last year, two points a game, and she has really, really been a huge factor for NC State this year so far. Averaged seven points, three straight starts, had 19 points against UGA as well. She has been on fire, scored five or more points in the last 10 games and continues to track it. Whitehorn, the super freshman. And I think Clemson needs to do more of that for her, setting screens on the ball and letting her go to work against the defender. A sarcastic clap by the NC State crowd for the, <laughs> for the foul call. Now a couple of substitutions. That's Keanu Gaines as well as Michaela Elmore checking the ball game for Clemson. So James in the game for her three-point shooting. Obviously, she has it really gotten an opportunity today, but they need her to get going against Davidson. Obviously, she played well four, five, and three-point range. Talk about the pace and just taking care of the ball. They got a nice look for Mimi Collins, but one of the questions was who's going to be able to be that player that steps up for Diamond Johnson. That's a huge blow, understanding what she is for this team, a true floor general. Yeah, and, and the thing about Diamond Jones Johnson is she understands nuance. When do I need to be the woman or when do I need to set up, you know, one of my teammates as a response to our opponent's scoring? Nice high-low available there. Robert Baldwin had to readjust in the air and gets the two. She now is sitting at six points. Yeah, exploiting that that matchup there, the high-low. You don't see NC State do a uh, high-low per se, but the opportunity was there. Transfer from FSU right now leads the team in rebounding. Four different players on this squad that are averaging more than four. Clemson not getting the turnovers here in this second quarter that they got in that first quarter. They haven't been able to run as much and get points in the paint like they did in that first quarter. And they scored five points in this quarter. They have 28 points in the first frame as it's a three-point ball game with a little under four minutes to go in the half. Elmore dishes it off to Robinson going against Baldwin. Spins in is a little short on the shot. Robinson slow to get up. Rivers dishes it off to James. He saw that a time or two against Davidson. Yeah, she had 19 points against Davidson. That's what they bring her in there for. And you're getting again off transition, not having to run that half court offense. James now with her first bucket of the ball game. Crowd on their feet. Douglas, short. So we're sitting at a tie ball game, 33 all, with Isaiah James saying, I hit five from here a game ago. Heating up in this one. How about Mimi Collins, 11 points, the only player for the Wolfpack in double figures? Yeah, she's a player that she could start in some other places. I mean, she's a veteran. She can shoot inside, she can shoot outside. She really helped bust that zone there at the free throw line area. And she's been big for them as well. Right there, just exploiting the free throw line area. She is, was an X factor, but not anymore. She is somebody that they really come to depend on. And how about this? The true student athlete in her internship is also able to step aside with the ACC Network crew and look at that role. You can tell the football players were like, we're not sure if we should get in the photo with you because she's really lighting it up so far for the Wolfpack. 
She is very serious with her assignments. <laughs> <laughs> the creative video intern. It's a nice win. Players can find opportunities to continue to build in their craft, and it goes well beyond just what they do on the floor. NC State coming out, going straight inside and getting Hobby and then getting a turnover here. Big shift between that first quarter and the second quarter defensively, you know, for Clemson. They weren't getting the turnovers that they got in that first quarter and they weren't able to get the transition baskets. I love this coach's corner with you. This is really nice. We'll have to get some talk, you know, break it down. I have my own session, right? My own <laughs> breakdown. I like that. I like that. Five lead changes in this ball game. As NC State builds on that and brings it to a four-point lead. 9-0 run by the Wolfpack. You talked about the adjustments. Some things you mentioned what Clemson wasn't doing in that second quarter. But now, what are, what are the Wolfpack doing in order to sh shift things around? Well, they're just being more patient. And they're uh, getting better position in the post so that, you know, obviously Hobby has an opportunity to go one-on-one -on -one with her defender. And then not, again, Clemson not able to put the same type of pressure in the zone that they did in the first quarter. So NC State able to get opportunities. And again, second opportunity. First quarter, they weren't getting those second opportunities. It's interesting to use the word depth in this ball game right now as Bradford almost came up with another steal. Only eight players available for NC State, but not a deep bench for Clemson. A tie up on the floor. And this one's gonna go. It's Back almost, to the Tigers. Almost like there's a depth, lack of depth, cancel each other out, you know what I mean? You got right. just eight, eight, eight on eight, really. You have not seen Ruby Whitehorn do what she's capable of doing, so interesting to see if they'll get her more involved in the offense. I think that was a very interesting conversation we were having with Coach as well, Amanda Butler, just what it's like. She's been tested throughout this non-conference schedule and going against a lot of great talent as Bradford was able to draw the foul there, step up to the line for two, but being a freshman and knowing that you can impact and really catch a lot of people off guard early in the season is different when you get into ACC play. Yeah, you've had 11 games of film for coaches to watch and they should be able to figure out, you know, what you're good at. She's obviously a great athlete. Right now, still a two-level two score, not a great three-point shooter, but you know, the intensity is ratcheted up when you get into league play. And as a freshman, you have to figure out, if they stop me from doing X, how do I do Y? And how do I get more involved? And then also, you know, it's a coaches too. Wednesday is National Signing Day for football, and we have you covered right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. We'll have our annual special breaking down all the ACC recruits taking you through each school with highlights and evaluations. Coverage of the one-hour show begins at 3 Eastern down there that has everything going to full court trap by Clemson trying to see if they can speed the wolf pack up Hobby very interesting there it seemed like that was a clean block well NC State doing a great job of attacking after they get it over that second level and that's what you want to do she's looking for the one on one opportunity really for Hayes there but Hobby coming up with it Mary Robinson picks up her first personal foul. And Hobby drains it. Hobby, a great story. Obviously having to play behind two names for all those years. And in today's, you know, uh, recruiting environment, <laughs> made the decision to, you know, wave out, stick it out, and get her time. And, and I think she's a great player. I love her confidence. She has these little subtle, uh, you know, subtle body language moves that she does to say, you know, when she scores it, you know, you guys can't guard me. There's Whitehorn going through the hole and getting a charge call there. And we talked about just how people are going to scout you. And most of her moves go to the right side or either to the paint. So that's another example of just the next level on what she's going to learn throughout the ACC. Yeah, and that's, that's a, a commitment to watching film, too, on a daily basis to see what they're doing to you and how you can mitigate that. So Whitehorn picks up the foul. Bradford, of the intensity on the defensive end. 11-1 run for the Wolfpack over the last four minutes. Brown Turner almost coughed it up. Three seconds on the shot clock. James! 
her second three of the night. Lindsay well, State doing a better job of just being patient, making the right pass against the zone for Clemson. Eight-point lead. This is the biggest lead for the Wolfpack. Clemson with an opportunity to have the last shot of the half. Whitehorn. No one to help. So that's the fifth turnover for Clemson. And Whitehorn will take a trip to the bench as well as Elmore. Only 3.9 seconds here. Watch for maybe a back screen to clear somebody going to the basket. Saw it backcourt to play for Brown Turner, and that would have definitely left everyone going crazy. Well, Isaiah James says, you know what? I did it against Davidson. Let me try one more time here. I am two for two from three-point range. Well, I don't think we can ask for a better way to start here. Clemson right now was off to a hot start in the first quarter, and it's a tale of two quarters as they're two for 13. I know the halftime crew will have a nice one breaking this down, so we're going to get you over to Kelsey Riggs in the studio with Muffin McGraw for Halftime Report. Angel and Helen, thanks so much. Welcome into this ACC Network Halftime Report. Alongside the Hall of Famer, Muff McGraw, I'm Kelsey Riggs. And what a finish to that half that we saw from NC State. Finished on a 14-1 run, able to hold Clemson scoreless for nearly six minutes there at the end. What changed for the Wolfpack? You know, I think they could gain a little intensity in their defense. They really came out a little sluggish. They were playing well offensively, but just couldn't seem to get in sync on defense. And Clemson shot the ball well in the first quarter. We were talking going into this game, what would NC State look like without two of their best players obviously Christmas break right around the corner and it seems like they got the message coach on the other side of things you mentioned Clemson and how well they were shooting Daisha has already 11 points in the first half what do you like about what you're seeing from them and the way they've been able to hang well I think everybody's contributing you have Damari sitting out on the three-point line she's she's making threes which is maybe a little unusual she's more around the basket normally Ruby Whitehorn coming off to a good start I, I think that they're playing good team basketball they're moving the ball they're getting open shots Amari Robinson with eight points already in the first half they're going to need a little bit more as it is a 42 to 34 lead right now for NC State at the break. A different schedule looks like for this team as well. Meanwhile, we got to send you back to the second half at Reynolds Coliseum. NC State seems to have found its groove. They're up 42 to 34 at the break. It's halftime here at Reynolds Coliseum right now. NC State with an eight-point lead. They finish the half on a 14-1 run. They are perfect at home and trying to continue that as they have their first game of the ACC play. I made the way alongside Coach Helen Williams. And Coach, we just talked about it the entire break. It's a tale of two quarters. We'll see if it's a tale of two halves just shortly, but a few things that stood out to you about what the pack were able to do in order to have that 14-1 run. Yeah, well, they started off shaky with the eight turnovers in the first quarter, but then they got a hold of themselves. It was by committee, as we said. They've got seven players that have an assist and did a much better job of executing against that trapping zone for Clemson. And this is a little bit of what it looked like when you're talking about how they were able to break down the zone. They outscored Clemson 20 to 6 in the second quarter. Yeah, well, they found the gap. The problem they had is they kept going in short corner. And when they went in the second quarter, they kept the ball out of the short corner, exploited that free throw line area, you know, got some points in transition and able to settle down a little bit. And then, you know, miscues here on defense and able to get some on three point shots and able to hit some of those shots. So just doing a really good job of taking what was available. I think in the first quarter, you know, they were going to force that ball into the short corner, and Clemson was so aggressive off uh, defensively, they were able to get those eight turnovers. I think another thing that really stood out was just the three ball from players that came outside of Mimi Collins. She went off to start the first quarter, but Isaiah James, who in the previous game had five threes, knocks down two triples to close out the second quarter. Yeah, and a lot of different people scored, and the problem with Clemson is, you know, they, they have Amari uh, Robinson and Deja Bradford start off, but they have, aside from Robinson, they have zero points from their post score. So that's a problem for Clemson. Ooh, let that one marinate. 
We talked about sharing the ball as the Wolfpack start the half off with the Rock. 13 assists on 17 made field goals. They had the hot hand in the second quarter. Clemson decided to stay in that zone. Great pass there, even though the shot was missed from Sanaya Robinson. White one who didn't have the best first half. She only had five shots in that first half. And that's that's not enough for her. She's the second leading scorer for, for Clemson. We talked about that 29 points from her as Hannah Haight has the first points of the second half. When they score, they're allowed, they're, they, it allows them to set up their press. How about the beautiful touch from Camille Hobby? So for the first two possessions, you get scores from the post player. You get Hannah Hank for Clemson and Camille Hobby for NC State. Senior from Jacksonville, Florida. So able to graduate as well, had some family in town. Father is the pizza blind coach for the Cincinnati Beagles. He was in attendance. I know he's happy of her. And she on cue was able to pull down the rebound as well. A little misconnection between Rivers and Dupree and Brown Turner. Perfect man couldn't come down with the two. So that's, that's that not a great pass there. They've exploited that. You've got to have a self. To, oh, nice block to make up for it. Now they know you're going to go to that free throw line area now. So NC State's got to use some pass fakes and, and use a skip pass. Yeah, see right there at the free throw line, and Asia Bradford, every once in a while, takes one of those uh, shots that's not great, but Jakea Brown-Turner there making up for the miscue with the blocked shot. And picked up the foul on the other end is... Well, that's what you don't want is Robinson getting a foul to second foul. On the perimeter there, you need her in the game. Amari well, Robinson picking up her second personal foul. We talked about how she has to wear a lot of different hats on this team and has to stay on the floor, no doubt. Well, Turner might want a little bit more patience there. Shot took that shot with 19 seconds to go. Well, here's the interesting thing. Bradford started off playing really well. You know, she's going to she's going to continue to take those shots. And you see a really nice layup there by Hayes. Are those shots going to fall for Bradford in the second half? Coach, you know, as there's a nice look on the inside. White one close to knocking that one down. Instead, she'll get a trip to the free throw line and will get two. Again, deflections, tips. Hayes here going to the basket. One off the wrong foot, still making the score. So Hobby picks up her second personal foul. As White Horn knocks down the first one. Well, we have a college basketball doubleheader for you Wednesday night right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Virginia Tech is in Chestnut Hill to take on Boston College in their first game at 6.30 Eastern. Then Florida State hosts Notre Dame in Tallahassee. These are the final games for both teams before the holiday break. We talked about in years past in the ACC, you could probably play a non-conference schedule right before the break and you come back in January with a fresh slate. Now, you have no time to look past any team in December because ACC play is here. Well, you're right into it as soon as, sometimes before pre-conference is uh, over. Four teams have already started off ACC play, ACC play back in November, which is very interesting to even say. Five on the shot clock for Clemson. Robinson needed that bucket. They were 0 for their last five. That breaks the streak there. 10 points for Amari Robinson. Clemson sticking with that zone. You just gotta be patient and take what they give you. And that baseline area is going to be open. You see every possession there, that forward comes up and plays that first pass. If she doesn't get to the baseline, 
quick enough, they're going to have a shot there. Talked about how it's going to be a dogfight every single day. Look at this preseason, week six. We're looking at different teams in the top 25. A couple that stand out to you? Yeah, I mean, just four. Uh, five, six, seven, right. eight in the, in the <laughs> polls there. I mean, it's uh, there's not going to be an easy game any night. And I think in the long run for the teams that do well, that will serve them well with the net rankings and things like that. Because every night they're going to be going against, you know, a, a top team. It's going to be great for their schedule, the strength of schedule. Keanu Gaines checks in the ball game. Check in for Ruby Whitemore. That's a kid that I think has so much potential for Clemson, just hasn't been able to realize it yet. Clearly the best athlete on the team, great basketball player, just hasn't really figured it out yet. Saw her just smacking backboard, almost touching the rim. A few of those rebounds. Coach said, okay, we love to see it, but now get some more rebounds for us if you don't mind. <laughs> That's a great contested shot made by Bree Perpignan there over Zania Rivers. Perpignan now with seven points. Rivers opens up like the Red Sea and gets another bucket. And to say just being aggressive and taking what the defense gives them in transition. A couple missed shots by Clemson allowing them to run. Second goal of the day, but I think it's very interesting for Sanaya Rivers, a sophomore coming in, the transfer from South Carolina. The difference in her game, you talked about the confidence, but over the last two games, eight assists, only one turnover. You know, I watched her in her very first game as a freshman, and she quite frankly looked like a deer in the headlights, but <laughs> the maturity and the confidence, as you see Hayes there, uh, for Sanaya Rivers over this last year has been really nice to see. And I love Madison Hayes. Like, she just, you don't see a whole lot on the stat sheet, but she's so important for NC State being on the floor. Eight points for Hayes. Bobby tried to fake on the outside. Malaysia Douglas didn't go for it. Not the forearm, and Samaya Rivers just said, uh uh, not my house. Well, Sanaya Rivers has just improved so much over the last year. A lot of confidence going to the basket using her skill. Great for NC State. Well, you know what the holidays bring. You see all these amazing sweaters that come out. Mine was left in dry cleaning, Coach. I'm sorry, I can't help you there. <laughs> Even Grinch Green, Coach Amanda Butler, has on her nails right now, but she's too busy working about the adjustments for <laughs> NC State, mainly because of the length from NC State, because they're all over the floor on the defensive end. Yeah, anybody that plays against NC State, you're going to struggle with that. They've got players that can guard on the perimeter. Jada Boyd, who's not playing today, at 6'2". They've got Sanaya Rivers at 6 foot, um, and then Madison Hayes at 6 foot, and then you've got Collins, who's 6'3", who can guard on the perimeter, who's playing a great game today. 14 points, 7 rebounds, 3 assists, and zero turnovers. Wow. And she's not the X Factor anymore. She is a, an integral part of NC State's on both ends of the floor. They're going to clip that off and put it on their highlight tape. Beautiful. Right out of the break. Three point basket. Anna Hank knocks down another shot. She's been one of those players. We said we needed to see a little bit more from her from the floor, but she's had some key buckets. Uh, just the defense there, a little bit too much in the lane and leaving her on the fast break. You've got to find her because she's not going to run to the rim. She's going to run to the three-point line. Seven-point lead for the Wolfpack. Elmore. Couldn't quite connect. Well, coach giving her encouragement there, but she's, a, she's another player that... Yes, she's a post player, but she prefers to stay outside. Not going to do too much there inside in terms of your traditional post play. And it's great when she makes that shot, but when she struggles, it hurts Clemson. 
and the high hopes for Elmore as well. Just one of the most decorated players coming out of Ohio. All Ohio player of the year. Still working herself as James is able to draw the foul. That one's going to go against Hannah Hank. So I like NC State. They've been able to execute in the half court. And they've been able to execute good opportunities in transition. In that first quarter, they really struggled in the half court. So they've settled down a little bit now. We've talked about that for Clemson. Shot 57% in the first quarter and dropped down to 15 in the second. Well, we've seen some fans across the ACC, and now we need your help. This winter, ACC Network wants to experience each sport from your perspective. So snap a pic or take a video, tag it with hashtag all the devotion and post it to your social. You just might, just might see it on the ACC Network. Did you post our pic? You know what? I gotta, I gotta post it. I, this game has just been so back and forth. I don't have enough time to do anything else but have this great conversation with you. I got you though, for sure. All the devotion. Hashtag all the devotion. <laughs> Approaching that three minute mark here in the third quarter as Bradford sends it off to Hannah Hank at the top of the key. Whitehorn cleans up for the rebound, gets the bucket oh, as well. Shot. Just adjusted herself in the air around the defense. They need to get her going. Let's see why she's a Jordan Brand All American. James saying I got a little lift of my own. I mean, that's a that's a really good one, too. We got a show here. Whitehorn adjusting in the air, and then the Euro step taking the contact and scoring by James. She said, I'm not just a three-point shooter. I can get to the basket as well. Coach, you know this, too, just the balance in the offense when someone has to fly out at you after you knock down a couple of triples. What's next? And, and if you're a three-point shooter, you've got to add that aspect to your game because in the scouting report, they're going to say, make her put it on the floor. And just doing a really good job there of getting to the basket. Can't complete the three-point play. James does have nine points off of the bench, though. So Clemson bringing in Inyang. We talked earlier with Coach about her and her ability. She is a traditional post player. We'll see if they can get some opportunities from her. Right horn stopped by James. Five to work with. Beautiful dish on the inside. Inye on cue. Right horn just streaks through and gets the deuce. Thompson again turning up that defense. Four-point ball game. Clemson giving the number eight team in the nation all they've got. These last few possessions on defense look like the first quarter for Clemson. Aggressive in the passing lane. NC State being unsure with their passes. Another almost turnover there. Nice dish there for Perpina and two Inyang. And then defense just hands in the air and in the passing lane from Whitehorn. Just being aggressive, you're NC State. You can't make those long, floaty passes against the, zone, uh, against the press. You've got to be crisp and short with those and get it over that first line and then attack because that's when you're going to have the numbers. Straight out of Detroit to see Whitehorn. One of those players that continues to just show up. Really starting to put things together in the second half. Clemson wanted the back four. I, I think they have a point there. I don't think it was a, a the Brown Turner hits a shot. I, don't, I didn't think that a Clemson player touched that. And then they get two points out of it. 90 seconds left in this third quarter. Opinion. Rivers on her. Three dishes to Indian. Little off the mark, bodies flying everywhere. Whitehorn comes up. And one! Well, Inyang comes in and proves her worth. And Coach, you gotta play her more. We talked about that earlier. I wondered why she hadn't played much, but she's been under the weather and not had an opportunity to practice. But here, Whitehorn has just been really active here in this third quarter. And then you see the 
potential for the end one for Inyang there. Remember I said in that first that first half, no post players scored. Yep, points in the paint. All their points in the paint came from transition. So this is a good sign for Clemson. 52-56. This fourth quarter is going to be awesome. Unbelievable right now. Inno sitting at four points. Knocks down the free throw for a fifth. She didn't score in their previous game. But on both sides, you can say, when your number is called, you got to be ready to deliver. And so far, Clemson has been able to show glimpses of that as well. This is, we're going to see how NC State's going to react to this, because against Iowa, they struggled, but they were able to overcome that. But that was when they had Diamond Johnson at the point guard. So it's going to be interesting to see how they react this fourth quarter. A lot of bodies on the inside. Peter Brown Turner tried to see if she can get a nice look, and River Baldwin little tussle with Amari Robinson. You think it matters? I think it matters. I think the possession and the, the want to of getting that ball matters to both these teams. It's great to see. So the jump ball goes to the Tigers. I think another thing to look at is just who's dominating the glass. Right now, the Wolfpack winning in that department by a plus 10. We all know that's one of the favorite things for you know, the staples for Coach Moore is getting on the glass on both ends of the floor. He's asking for one shot here. Coach said that is the most important thing for me, rebounding, creating more opportunities out of it. Mimi Collins slows things down. Ten seconds left in the third quarter. Three-point ball game. Jakia Brown Turner, it could, it could extend. Yes, she does. And they have the six point lead as we go into the fourth. Well, Clemson here, you got the nice little Euro, I mean, sorry, NC State, nice little Euro step by James and then Ruby Whitehorn working really hard and Ying Yang contributing in the post with the N1 opportunity. And the mistake by the defense for Clemson, you get the nice little three pointer there by Valentine Turner James. Great job. Three down, one to go. We couldn't ask for a better game as Clemson really showing us everything they have in their bag as NC State just has a six point lead going into the fourth quarter. Yeah, and this game has just been a game of shift in momentum for each team. I mean, and what about right out of the break? A quick bucket for the Wolfpack. Clemson scored 19 points in that third quarter. Five by Hank and five by Inyang. So Inyang getting the start here in the, in the fourth quarter. Two players for NC State in double figures now. Hayes as well as Collins. Interesting that Ruby Whitehorn is not in the starting lineup here for the fourth quarter. You've got Maddie Ott instead. So that's back-to-back -back buckets by Hayes. Now sitting at 30 which leads to another timeout for the Crimson Tigers. Well, Coach, sometimes life happens fast. 41 seconds off the clock. How about Hayes with five points? Well, just snatching that momentum right away here, coming out. Nice little layup here. Again, just been really crucial to them offensively, and then so that's a hit the three there. Five points, 41 seconds, and then I think that was a great timeout uh, by Coach to settle her team down because NC State just started off at a torrid pace and just, like you said, 41 seconds. This is their biggest lead of the ball game. So where does Clemson go here for their scoring? For Pignan. See, that's where Bradford's volume shooting sometimes hurts Clemson. If she's on, she's on. But if not, you know, they struggle because you're really creating offense for the other team with missed shots. Heat check by Hayes. No good in the corner. Whitehorn back in the ball game for Clemson. Probably one of the adjustments coming out of that break. Bradford 
has cooled off drastically after that first quarter burst. And just a little off the target. But you know what, if you're a coach, you're not mad at that. That's If there is such a thing as a good turnover, I mean, you are looking in the right place. You just gotta clean it up. 15th turnover for NC State. They had eight in the first quarter. You mentioned they only had two in the second. But nonetheless, something that Coach Moore is gonna look at, a foul on the play, Hobby. A little upset with the body control of Robinson on that one. So Clemson trying to create some opportunities to go one-on-one -on -one for Robinson, that time directly in the post. Their previous time bringing her off the screen here. But again, you see people standing around. So Whitehorn knocks that one down. 11 points now for the freshman. And another turnover. Make that 16 for NC State. And that's just like a focus here. That's a good pass, gotta catch that. Bradford, Bradford 0 for 3 here in the last three shots. And they've all come within maybe six or seven seconds of the shot clock. And so you're shooting yourself out of this momentum that you had. And four for 13 from the field. 11 points that Bradford does have. He's been on both ends of the floor. A couple steals in the ball game as well. Reed dishes it off. And finally rolls down for Robinson. Robinson now with 12 points on the game. You see, this is good strategy by Clemson because you don't really have a whole bunch of ball handlers in there per se. Again, we talked at the beginning. How are they going to handle the pressure without your normal point guard, Diamond Johnson, in there? He saw it, 13 made field goals, or 13 assists on 17 made field goals at one point in the game. They'll have to heave it, Hayes tipped. And that'll be a shot clock violation, another turnover for the Wolfpack. See, that's a good strategy because they're not really trying to steal the ball. They're just trying to eat up clock for Clemson, so, I mean, for NC State, so they don't have an opportunity to score. See for Pena here, penetrating, and that's been really where Robinson has gotten all her points outside the paint. Seven point ball game. Wolfpack with the advantage and see, and that's a small thing, but you have Whitehorn trying to drive and she didn't see the, Maddie Ott came to her side and brought her defenders, so it was so congested there. That's, you know, gonna come with time when she learns the game and has a little bit more patience. Assuming that uh, Amari Robinson is going to get a quick blow. Michaela Elmore checks in the ball game for the Tigers. Another nice rebound by Whitehorn. Elmore has yet to score in this ball game. Again, the length and the quickness by the six footer. You know, on the wing there, very difficult for the Clemson players to navigate. So Whitehorn was looking for some type of help. Didn't get it, but instead, coach calls a timeout, working on the adjustments. Wolfpack with the 64 to 57 advantage over Clemson, 620 left in this ball game, but right now it comes down to the turnovers. We gotta take care of the most important thing on the floor, and that's the rock. Well, yeah, and you see here they had 19 turnover against, turnovers against Utah, UConn, and they, UConn scored 27 points off of those 19 turnovers. So it's not just a mistake, it's what it leads to as well. And, and there's a cumulative effect with turnovers. An individual player thinks that it's just her turnover, but if they all keep saying my bad consistently, then that's when you get 17 turnovers in, you know, three and a half quarters. Turns into a bad record. The coach doesn't want to hear, right? Especially not coach for. Yeah, four substitutions at the table ready for Clemson. The next dead ball. Hayes left alone, steps back. Too long. And Zakia Brown-Turner with the rebound and draws the foul. 
Now, this isn't going to show up on the stat sheet, but I mean, several times tonight where Sanaya Rivers has just penetrated that zone and forced rotations that have led to open players and open shots like you just saw. Around Turner steps to the line for two. She has nine. This is her first trip to the free throw line and knocks it down. On Thursday, December 29th, we'll have a women's basketball doubleheader right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Six Eastern, Notre Dame travels to Coral Gables to take on Miami, then Duke goes over to Reynolds Coliseum to face NC State. Always a nice matchup. See between those two. There's plenty of time here for Clemson. They're only down by eight. Inye for a long and for a second it was Friendly fire. Whitehorn and Collins broken up a bit. Jump ball called, and it's going to stay with Clemson. So Billy Smith just making sure everybody is on the right page, and it seems like there was a foul that was called there, too. Watch for the inbounds and love to Whitehorn. They do this for her a lot. Get an opportunity to get in there, but they usually try to get her an alley oop underneath. So this jump ball will now go to NC State, only a couple of ticks off the ball. It's very interesting as while well, Clemson is trying to look for good possessions down the stretch, this is a young team that's trying to pull things together. A couple of the times Whitehorn has had the ball, that's just the next step for her game, knowing when and where to put your foot on the gas. Yeah, and again, that goes back to just game time experience. It goes back to having a commitment to film and, you know, looking and seeing, slowing the game down so you don't make those mistakes that come up with empty possessions, which Clinton's had a few of when Whitehorn's had the ball. Lenny Bradford picks up the foul. Coach, we've been there a time or two just understanding how fast this league can be in your freshman year. This is why I'm on this side. Oh, it's of nice over here. This is much more fun. <laughs> it's easier. It's less stressful. And I'm always right. Tonight, River. Oh, nice view. Yeah. And can't get it to fall. River Baldwin gets the cleanup, but the crowd may have to wait because I think they called this one for Rivers to step up to the free throw line, not, not actually Baldwin. Yeah, again, it just attacking once you get over. She's just doing it herself individually, but you know, she hasn't had a game where it's a lot of points or, you know, a lot of assists, but she has really, I think, done a good job of, for the most part, of keeping this team, you know, under control. She's, she only has five points so far, and, but she's got six rebounds. And there really is no stat for controlling the team and running the offense and keeping people you know, on task. Yeah. She's done a great job with that today. Transfer out of South Carolina, as we mentioned. She decided to come over to NC State. Well, sometimes it's about family ties because her sister, Ronna Rivers, actually played here. It was on the defensive team, the 2004 all-defensive team. So sometimes it just comes down to that. River Baldwin, they wanted the foul. Full court pass to Hayes. A lot of contact, she draws the foul. You know, the fans want a foul, but there's like eight things going on at the same time by both players. So the official's just trying to be patient to figure out what the call is. And they're just, the, the crowd's very impatient. You can't call eight things at once. Oh, well, you know the crowd just wants, you know, everything has to be on there on their side, right? Yeah, and, and again, if I'm the coach, I'm with the crowd. Yes, foul, foul, foul. What are you doing? What are you doing? I'm, you know, in their ear all the time. But, you know, they have to call what they see. Mm -hmm. I just think they do a, a really good job. Like, you haven't really, officials, yes. when you don't really think about them doing a game, that means they've done a great, they've had a great game. Their job is not easy by any stretch of the imagination. Hayes now knocks down her 14th point. Mary Robinson put Hayes on the free throw line. That's her third personal foul. And drains the second 15 points for Hayes. Two points above her average. Just back-to-back -back games where she's had 15 or more points. She and Collins have really been integral to the offense 
for NC State. Not just scoring, but rebounding as well. Correction on my hands had nine points last game, but Sonia Rivers, hello. There again is, is that length. And Sonia Rivers at six foot, but that wingspan, she can cover a lot of area, and Perpignan thought she was open. It's the glance back that I love, you know? Like, where did she go? <laughs> Two blocks for Rivers. Whitehorn up. Can't get this one to fall. Even wow. that was a contested shot with Hayes playing defense. How about Baldwin? Protect the paint the last couple of trips down the floor. Yeah, she's uh, one of those players you don't want to mess with. <laughs> her, her facial expression is like, no, nah, I got this. One more pass. Rivers working baseline, dishes it off to Collins. You bet. Just again, Rivers just penetrating that zone and creating opportunities for her teammates. Wolfpack with their biggest lead of the night with less than four minutes to play. Yeah, just doing a great job on defense, man. Just really aggressive and forcing contested shots by Clemson. Great job by NC State on that end of the floor. Hello everyone, Sanaya Rivers, who has been all over the floor in this ball game. A couple of blocks, but definitely has been able to step up. Some dimes like this. Yeah, and she's been key to really, you know, penetrating that zone. They struggled with that in the first half, but she's been able to get around the defenders and get in those gaps and force the help rotation and create open shots for her teammates. And see their stats at this point. Mimi Collins having quite a night for herself. She had the hot hand to start with NC State. Protecting home court, they have only one loss on the season. We talked about that coming to UConn and tested throughout their non-conference schedule. But protecting home court. Even there, Hayes creating other opportunities. She's just so active on both ends of the floor. And obviously tonight she scored, but she doesn't score every game, but she's so crucial to them getting other opportunities. And they're about 328 away from winning their seventh straight season ACC opener. You know, in shooting practice today, you see Sonia Rogers getting, Rogers getting another opportunity. You would have thought with Wes Moore that they were, you know, not going to win anything for the rest of the year based on his you know, when they were in shooting practice and he was so not happy with how they were approaching shooting practice. But it worked because they definitely got them focused and executing. I tell you what, the conversation we were talking about too, you lose a couple of players, obviously, Hunain and Crutchfield and their pick third in the ACC to finish. And you ask, Ron Turner, how do you feel about people saying that you may or may not be one of those teams that they're looking at in the final four? And she said, we can put ourselves in the map. We still have a lot of depth, and those numbers are comparative at this point. Yeah, and I, I mean, you know, everyone's all there. Are they final four? Are they, they, everyone's talking about what they're not. And I'm like, this is, this is not a team full of busters. Like, these kids can play. This is a very talented team, and, and, and Westmore likes that. He wants them to have a chip on his shoulder. He'd rather operate that way, you know, than being pick number one. But, but she had a great point. Like, we're a different team, but we're still good. Right. One too many steps to the bucket. You don't have three consecutive ACC titles come out. That rubbing off on you uh, with that winning culture. Yeah, it's the culture, it's uh, the, the coaching, the player development. Um, Westmore and the staff, they do an outstanding job with that. And, and this is the case where you've got kids who, yeah, you're shorthanded, but we're still able to do what we do and do it well. I don't think we can speak highly enough of how Sanaya Rivers has been able to step up in that point guard position in ACC play as well. As this is her third start in the absence of Diamond Johnson. And that's a, you know, that's a sign of a great player. Can you do these things against 
the best competition. She mm -hmm. showed up against Iowa. She showed up today, you know, in the first conference game, and she's only going to get better. Has nine rebounds as well. So that one goes out of bounds, and you're talking about those players that have opportunities to step up for the Wolfpack. When you have two of your top three players, as far as scoring, on the bench, you ask who's going to be able to step up, but only one player that's averaging double figures takes the floor in Jakea Brown Turner. And they're able to knock these plays down. And, and this gives you a look at what you're going to need, you know, toward the end of the conference season and going into the ACC tournament. Another steal here by Hayes. Again, that length. Hayes, have yourself a night. Hayes. The leading scorer in this ball game with 18. I think, she's earned, I think she's earned a little bit more playing time. What do you think? Just a tad. Put me in, coach. She's ready to play. Well, Hayes with the motor for NC State, hitting a three-point play, I mean three-point shot, and then just playing the D, getting another opportunity in the passing lane. Nice job by Hayes. <laughs> yeah, look at Diamond Johnson. Hop on, don't hop on the bad leg, kid. We need you for the next game. So Madison Hayes, now with 20 points, that's her new career high. Her previous career high was 15 points against Charlotte. She was six for seven from three. And tonight, she's just been all over the floor. My goodness, we could talk about her and how she stepped up. Mimi Collins in the first half. You go down the line about how key they've had different players. This, in, the, in the beginning, at the top of the show, we said eight different players either tied or had the leading score or led the team in scoring in those games. That means a lot to Coach Moore. It means a lot. We were talking off air about how they will respond to the pressure. Uh, you know, against Iowa, they did a great job, but then they they had Diamond Johnson. But how would they do today? Just look at what 5,684 points. I mean, that's just. I mean, the cumulative of what they lost is incredible. But it's a, you know, it's a credit to the work that the uh, players have put in. It's a credit to the coaching staff yep. to get them to buy in and still be an effective, an effective team. You just see the numbers at the bottom, and you're like, would they lose? A lot. But they have a lot left on that roster. I mean, they're going to be fine. Mm -hmm. uh, I think people sort of, I don't want to say, you know, wrote their obituary at the beginning of the season. But you look at that, and you're like, oh my god, how are you going to make up for that? And, um, you know, the players just keep getting it done. A couple of substitutions for Clemson. But this one is about taking care of for the Wolfpack with their 20-point lead with almost a minute left to play. Yeah, at one point, it was 53 to 56 when you had Ingen with that three-point possession, and you wondered how NC State was going to react to that, and they've done it beautifully, and Rivers gets called for the charge there, I think. She can't believe it, the crowd can't believe it. No one can believe it. Let's see here. Is she outside the circle? Hard to see from that angle. I think she got away with one. Douglas outside. Close to knocking that one down as Rivers picks up the foul there. NC State, how about them outscoring Clemson 18 to 4 in this fourth quarter? So if you're, if you're Westmore, do you only show that first quarter so you have something to talk about? <laughs> to make sure they uh, understand that there's a lot of things that they need to do against, quite frankly, you know, better teams in the ACC. They've got a lot, they've done well here, but they've got a lot to work on. And then if you're Clemson, you go back to think, what happened to us? We had that great first quarter. What happened to us the, the rest of the game? Started out hot and weren't able to turn the ball over and get opportunities in transition. And part of that is NC State's defense. NC State, you can see their upcoming schedule. They have a little bit of a break. Their next game coming against Duke on the 29th. 
to close out the 2022 year. Less than one minute to play, another turnover at the top of the key. That's going to be slowed down by James, who takes the foul there. So we saw the river schedule coming up for NC State. Clemson has one more non-conference schedule or game against Radford. That's going to be on Tuesday. And then, hey, they see Virginia Tech on the 29th as well to close out the year. with a tough loss to Notre Dame. It was five and six. Top 10 matchup in the ACC. Florida State took the loss to UConn, rallied back to Nia Latson. 10 straight games with 20 or more points. The talent in the ACC is endless as the Wolfpack will dribble this one out and will push it to seven straight wins. And oh, by the way, continue to protect home court and get their first win of the ACC. So we can go down the line and talk about the different players that stepped up. I think we might have time for an interview. I don't know if we can bring the whole team over <laughs> since we said it's done by committee, but what are some things that you saw in the Wolfpack that they can build on going into the next game? And they have a little bit of a break. Well, obviously, Sanaya Rivers is, you know, getting better every game when she's handling the ball. She's seeing the floor better. Can't say enough about Hayes and Collins being really, really important to them as they go down the stretch. And, you know, they're going to be in terms of bench, bench strength, uh, NC State's going to do really well. So Clemson, 0-1 in ACC play, dropped to 8-4 on the season. But what a night for NC State taking care of business with 77-59. Coming up next, all ACC. So I want to thank, for me, with Helen Williams and our entire amazing crew. Thank you and good night from Raleigh. We'll send it over to Kelsey in the studio. Let's show you now what you just saw here on ACC Network, and that was Wes Moore's crew, number eight team in the country, hosting Clemson, trying to get it done. This was a tight game early on. We take it to the second quarter. NC State actually trailing by three, but Isaiah James sinks the corner three, ties it at 33. 30 seconds left in the second. Madison Hayes to James. It's been fun to see her step up. It really has, and that's what the opportunity with the injuries has done. It's allowed Madison Hayes to step up, Isaiah James. I thought Mimi Collins, though, was the difference in the first half. Mimi was great. Ruby Whitehorn was great for Clemson as she's there for the rebound and the putback. Clemson trailing, trying to fight back. Then three minutes left in the third. Clemson trailing. NC State with the inbound pass. And then Ruby Whitehorn. Defense turns into offense. She really had a great game, didn't she? And the, the thing that impressed me about Clemson today, nine turnovers. That's tremendous. If you can have nine turnovers against a really good defense like NC State. NC State, though, doing its thing. Jakia Brown-Turner getting in on the action. She knocks down the three. And then Madison Hayes from the corner. She sinks a three of her own. She had a career-high 20 points in the win as NC State takes care of business. The final score in this one, 77-59. to And, Coach, we miss, mentioned Madison Hayes stepping up, Isaiah James stepping up. There was no Jada Boyd, no Diamond Johnson again for the second and third game in the row for, for each of them battling injuries right now. How are those other players fitting in? Well, if you're Westmore, you have to be really happy with what you're being shown right now because now when those players come back, we're going to be a much better team. We're going to be such a much stronger team. The bench strength will be tremendous because so many people have been in big games. They've made big shots. They've had to make those contributions. And I think you're seeing that today. Mimi Collins was really good in the zone offense at the uh, th at the circle. She did a great job at the free throw line. She can make that shot. She really hurt the zone, and I thought that was the difference in the first half. Mimi finished with 16 points, 8 rebounds, and 3 assists. On the other side of things, for Clemson, coach, they ab were able to really come out and battle and make this tough for NC State for the majority of the game. I thought the game was much closer than the score. I thought yeah. it was a really good game. Like you said, they had the lead early on. They made some shots. Uh, I think it's a matter of the inside play. River Baldwin came in, Mimi Collins. They had some, some strength inside, and Clemson really couldn't match up with it. Seventh straight win for NC State. They are the number eight team in the country, and they get it done against Clemson today.